Sodor, and NWR Origins, as well as the specials that indirectly tie in with the series. So, Thomas one edward 2 Henry Free, also known as T1E2H3, is a well-known Thomas YouTuber with his own series called The Ends of Sodor. Starting in 2013 and having the finale in 2019, he is still expanding on his series with the recently released prequels of 10 out of 10 and Murdoch's Misadventure in 2023. There is also a prequel series that he created that ties into his series somewhat called NWR Origins, detailing the past lives of some of the engines. There were also a few railway series style books that he created around the Brendan Branch Line and the Coldy Fell Railway. However, the timeline is a bit confusing, as in 1925, the engine known as Alfred tried to murder Henry and Gordon. Alfred died in the ensuing explosion. NWR Origins is canon to Engines of Sodor as shown throughout the series, notably in Season 4, Episode 6, Painful Memories, where Henry has an unfortunate incident with fuel tankers, making him remember the incident with Alfred. But with Night Express to Vickerstown and Revenge of the Ghost Train, Alfred came back as a ghost in 1995. But Croven appears in it with the character development that he gained in the most famous engine, which takes place in 2017, causing some disconnect here. The specials as well, such as Haunted Henry and How the Diesel Stole Christmas, is why I made this video in the first place. Diesel 10. He features prominently in those aforementioned specials as a hallucination dream demon of sorts. However, Diesel 10 appears in the main series, making a huge contribution in the finale. But the specials are somewhat canon, as in Haunted Henry, the station is called Gorsiflin, where the Sergian Revolutionary War took place and the leader was run down by an SM engine. Edward mentions the incident in episode 8, but when we see all the SM engines later in the series together, none of them mention the incident at Gorsiflin. Final side note to mention the railway series is canon with Engines of Sodor, as well as some of the TV episodes, but I won't mention every reference or else we will be here all day. Also, the remakes and adaptations do not count for this timeline video. With that all out of the way, I present the T1E283 timeline, which, wow, it is oddly confusing looking at it for a series about talking trains. Before the NWR, 1879 to 1915. The timeline starts in 1879 with the construction of Duke. He was a bouncy, eager engine. He had six other brothers and sisters. Sometime in 1879 to 1880, Duke had a minor accident with some coaches, which resulted in him being sent to help on the MSR or the Mid Sodor Railway. In 1894, the railways were expanding across Sodor. 75% of the people spoke English, the other 25 spoke Sudrik. The railway stopped at a hamlet called Gorsiflin. The Sudrian Revolution started around this time, led by Kluto Gwadrin. I probably butchered that. An ambush took place one fateful night, and Guto, in trying to attempt to navigate through the fog, was struck down by a, by a fully loaded train that was passing by. Guto was killed instantly. It is said that whenever the owl hoots and the mist rolls in near Gorsiflin, Guto's spirit will roam around and try to enact his revenge on the English railway. In 1897, a little engine called Smudger arrived on the mid Soto Railway, eager to get to work. He worked with Duke, Crimson, Albert, Stuart, Falcon, and Jim, as well as other engines of the MSR that we unfortunately do not see. Smudger's crew were unfortunately alcoholics and rode Smudger roughly, often causing him to derail. He was of course not to blame, but the insistent blaming by the crew of Smudger ended up causing him to become far more of a show off and kinda just be the personality that people thought he was. In 1901, his driver pulled a regulator accidentally, running over and killing a passenger. The manager understood what had happened, but the passengers not wanting to ride on the MSR behind such a dangerous engine, Smudger was turned into a generator in 1902. We are now in the new century, where in 1910, the Soda and Mainland Railway filed for bankruptcy and the three remaining engines, Neil, Clive and Matthew, were sold to the newly formed Northwestern Railway Company. We have now arrived in 1915, with the purchase of Thomas from the LBSCR and his eventual repainting. He helped with the construction of the main line. Edward is soon purchased to help with the running of the first express. The NWR officially opened in 1915, and with that, we come to the next part of the timeline, where things begin to get confusing. NWR Origins, 1915 to 1945. Following a locomotive crisis in 1922, Sir Topham had purchased Alfred, also known as 98462, and LNNRB 12. He also purchased 87546, otherwise known as Croven, and Henry. The latter two had no official class basis, both being a hodgepodge of locomotive designs leading to varied results. With an underperforming Henry and incidents involving 87546 and Alfred, Alfred was repainted into 98462 and Gordon was purchased in 1923. 98462 tried to convince Gordon to, to join his side, but when Gordon hit 100 mph in 1923, he was given the number 4 of the NWR. 98462 was outraged by this. In 1925, we see the demise of Alfred. 
After finding out that he is being sent away with Croven, Alfred has a mental breakdown. He decides to try and murder Gordon and Henry, which only results in him dying in the ensuing explosion. This is where the timeline begins to split here, as the incident creates the ending of the Sodor timeline, and indirectly ties in with what I call the Alfred Ghost timeline, which I'll explain later. In 1927, Smudler was taken from the MSR and converted into a brown tank engine, who was then sold to the Scarlowy Railway. He worked there for a few years until one night in 1929, his coupling rod got caught in the sleepers of the old iron bridge and he fell off the side into the swamps below. He was then taken by workmen and converted into a tender engine, being sold back to the MSR as Bertram, the old warrior. Smudler decided to go on as Bertram from then on, but he always remembered his tragic past. In 1941, Neil, Clive and Matthew were sent to India to help the railway over there, leaving Sodor by ship to head there. They would not see Sodor for over 60 years. In 1945, James arrived on Sodor, crashing on his first day while pulling a goods train. Thomas rescued him and received his own branch line as a result. I have a canon explanation as to why James arrived in 1945 as opposed to 1925 in the railway series. All the books, with the exception of the Thomas books, happen within the stated timeline, whereas the Thomas books happened in 1945 to 1946. There's a minor kink in the timeline being smoothed out by the time that Percy arrives on Sodor. It's all kind of timey wimey wibbly wobbly stuff if that makes sense. All the other railway series books take place within their stated years, with the exception of all the books prior to Toby. Those happen probably 10 years, maybe 10 to 15 up. The TV series episodes from season 5 to present happen within their release years from 1998 onwards, as mentioned with Bertram being discovered in 1998 in Toby's Discovery. The prequels to Engines of Sodor, 1946 to 2013. Over the next six years, years, we see the arrival of Percy, Toby, Duck, Donald and Douglas, Oliver, Bill and Ben, Mavis, and Boko through NWR Origins. In 1947, the MSR closed down and Duke was shut up in a shed, and Jim, Stewart, and Falcon were sent to the Peel Godred Aluminium Works. Stewart and Falcon were, were sold off to the Scarlow Railway, while Jim continued working at the plant, until in roughly the late 1960s when the aluminium supplies dried up. Jim was put into an old military bunker, but people forgot about him, so he stayed underground for nearly 50 years. In India, in 1990, the railway that the Eastern engines were sold to went bankrupt, so, so Neil was sold to a struggling line in Somalia, whereas Clive and Matthew were, so were stored in a shed for a later time. It was hell on earth for Neil, as Somalia soon went into a complete anarchy with the disestablishment of the government. Sometime past the year 2000, so Topham had found out about Neil's whereabouts and brought him back to Sodor. It's not really explained, but that's what is hinted at. On the mainland, sometime in the 1980s, there was a railway nicknamed the Magic Railway, run by a small engine by the name of Lady. There was a big diesel that ran the line near there. One day, the engines got into an argument which resulted in the big diesel chasing Lady. There was a viaduct up ahead, Lady crossed it safely, the big diesel did not. He ended up in a scrapyard where a businessman called Arthur Boggeston found him. Boggeston Fuel was the main diesel fuel supplier on Sodor, having a strong connection with Sir Topham Hatt. Boggeston decided to purchase the diesel, modifying it with a claw nicknamed Pinchy. The diesel was given the name of Diesel 10. Boggeston Fuel Company went through some struggles in the early 2000s, leading them to gift to Diesel 10 to Sir Topham Head, who used them to help picking up scrap across the railway. In 2013, a new batch of fuel tankers came to Sodor, and they were notoriously troublesome. Murdoch tried to pull a batch of them, but due to one of the trucks being derailed and the rest of the train holding back, the tanker exploded, causing Murdoch to derail. Following a thorough inspection, the tankers were able to continue to being used, notably one tanker called Rich. With well, the prequels done, we can now start discussing the main timeline of Engines of Sodor. Engines of Sodor, 2013 to 2023. Now we come to the Engines of Sodor part of the video, where from 2013 to 2019, the series expanded upon characters and had some really interesting stories, my favourite being Goatbusters. For the sake of time, I'm going to speed through the episodes in order that they air in, as the specific time that they take place in is unspecified. The winter ones take place in winter, obviously, but all the rest are kinda... Spring? Fall? Summer? You can decide. As you may have noticed on my timeline graph, I've added a yellow line here. This is to include how the diesel stole Christmas, which of course isn't canon to EOS, but it was made within this time in 2013, and if I'm going to include Haunted Henry, then I shall include how the diesel stole Christmas. How the Diesel Saw Christmas took place roughly in 2013, where Diesel basically went through the story of the Grinch, with a hallucinated Diesel 10 villain guiding him, and a lady hallucination to bring Diesel back to the good side. For obvious reasons around Diesel 10 and Lady, the special is not canon and created its own timeline. Haunted Henry follows the same plot as the season 5 episode, this time Henry sees Diesel 10 in a, in a jump scare dream sequence due to the events of the Sudrian Revolution only being mentioned by Edward once, this creates a new timeline. But, seeing as Edward did mention it, it kind of creates a little bit of a cross between. 
but it, but like it's only this in reference, so it doesn't really make any sense. Considering we know that you, we later know what Diesel Teen's origins are. With those two timelines being defined in yellow and green, we can now start talking about the canon timeline of EOS. With season one, we get introduced to the world with the first episode, a wretched day for Henry and James. This starts with the first series containing Gordon goes swimming, the blame game, Bill and Ben the brave brothers of Brendan, that's a tongue twister, Mike takes the road, stuck, engine unknown, a tale of a small green engine, the runaway rail car, and attack of the railway pirates. In Attack of the Railway Pirates, we meet Fitkins, the leader of the Railway Pirates who gets arrested trying to steal the gunpowder from the Scarloy Railway. Put a pin here, this will be important later. For Season 2 the following year, we got to Toad the Lucky Brake Van, The Road Rebel with Rollers, Old Reliable, The Bridge of Caledonian Doom, Special Engines, and The Eyes. In Episode 14, The Bridge of Caledonian Doom, we see the location of the Brendan Flower Mill and the rickety old bridge leading to it which did collapse in that episode. This is important to keep a pin on for later as well. Season 1 and 2 play out in 2013 and 2014 respectively, with a break in 2015 with the two railway series styled books, more about branch line engines and the slopes of Coley Fell, the latter featuring God Godred's ghost in some form, different to what we see in Revenge of the Ghost Train, but I'll discuss that further down the line. The search for Smudger happens between Season 2 and 3. Season 3 starts with Double Muddle being followed by Oliver's Tiny Tail, The Sodor Garrett, Duke's Reunion, and a breakthrough discovery. The Diesel 2 parter, the Devious Diesel, and Saint Packing takes place during the Rail Duck and the Diesel engine, with Revolutionary Redemption taking place following the events of the Series 6 episode The World's Strongest Engine. Season 4 starts with the Great Rory Heist, going on to feature Jim's Tail, Steaming Sausage, Diesels and Dragons, Earhead, Painful Memories, an unfortunate coincidence for Jock, The Creature, a turning point for Edward, and End of the Line for Edward. Season 3 takes place in 2017, and Season 4 takes place in 2017. The year we special the most famous engine happens roughly in 2017, which is one of the reasons that I made this video in the first place, as we see Crovin and Spencer have a fierce rivalry while the Flying Scotsman is visiting Sodor. When Crovin ends up in the ocean trying to beat Spencer in a speed competition, he gets flashbacks to Alfred, but only those from 1925, which is a bit odd considering he wasn't really there to see like Alfred's death, but besides. It is here that he grows from a selfish, arrogant engine to someone who is willing to help should someone need it. I'm going to break off here and divulge into the Alfred Ghost timeline for a bit here, as Crovin's character development is more so shown in that in Revenge of the Ghost Train, as opposed to the later series. The Alfred Ghost Timeline, 1914-2018 This timeline is marked in red in an alternate timeline showing being connected by the main timeline following events in 1925 which allows Alfred to come back from the dead and terrorize Sodor, notably Gordon and Henry. The tale of Timothy is also in this timeline. The tale of Timothy revolves around an engine of similar shape to Thomas being possessed by a demon in 1914, and he proceeded to run off the viaduct with a fully loaded train killing all those on board. His spirit haunts those who tell the tale of him. In 1995, Night Express to Vickers Town took place. This is a mockumentary style video showing the aftermath and the happenings of a serious accident. One night, Gordon was pulling the Express to Vickers Town, yeah in the title, when a sinkhole before the base of Gordon's Hill stopped him. He tried to reverse to Wellsworth, but a tree fell down on the line behind him, so he was unable to go anywhere. Henry was dispatched to, dispatched to remove the tree, but a thick fog rolled in. At the end of the episode, next to the field that Alfred died in, a video camera records something. It is a blink and you miss it moment, where ghost Alfred jumps out at the camera, presumably then causing Gordon and Henry to crash. I don't know how he does that, but anyway. When word about ghost Alfred's return gets out, panic ensues. Alfred begins to terrorize the island, showing that his power is able to lift trucks and engines off the line with ease, and making people disappear for good, and causing the whole island to be haunted, basically. Enter Mr. Rogman, a person from the Scarlow Railway who tells Sir Topham Hat the tale of the ancient kettle, an entity able to trap any ghost. We see in a flashback to the time that the kettle was used to trap Godred, who was terrorizing the Coldy Fell Railway in 1980. Sir Topham Hat and Mr. Rogman find the kettle and set out with Gordon and Henry to get rid of Alfred. Gordon and Henry fail spectacularly, and Gordon is about to be taken away by Alfred when Croven arrives. Croven is able to distract Alfred long enough for Sir Topham Hatt to capture Alfred, imprisoning him in a magic kettle forever. Timothy the Ghost Engine in 2018 is heavily hinted to be back on Sodor, but with the help of an old truck, the Farquhar Engines are able to imprison the spirit of Timothy. With that, the Alfred Ghost timeline is explained. I put, the, uh, I put the Timothy episode here as to explain how and why Timothy appeared in EOS, but it's never mentioned again by Thomas, Toby, or Percy, even as just a reference. The final season starts off with Ivor Hughes' Safari, 
The following episodes from that are Harley Sprung, Gordon Pops In, Goatbusters, A Tale of Two Small Green Engines, Conspiracy Theories, Trouble in the Hood, Boulder Strikes Again, and The Wrath of Boulder. The Tale of Timothy is not canon to the series as defined earlier in the episode. In Conspiracy Theories, we learn that Wretched's owner is Phil Boggeston, the son of Arthur Boggeston. Due to a contract created by the Hats and the Boggestons, Boggeston fuel would be used for all the diesels on, on the island if the prices were reasonable. Phil got greedy, however, and pushed the prices up sometime in 2013, causing Sir Topham had to cut all types of Boggeston fuel. This ended up causing Phil Boggeston to die of a stroke sometime in 2014 to 2015. With the end of Season 5, we reached the three-part finale, Tarnished Legacy, Phantom Saboteur, and The Wrath on the Rails. In Tarnished Legacy, we see the core catch of Sir Topham Hatt following a rather serious accident at Tidmouth. It is revealed here that the accident was a deliberate sabotage, and which then leads on into Phantom Saboteur. In Phantom Saboteur, we see the engines try to find out who the saboteur was. Sir Topham Hatt is almost assassinated here by a sniper rifle, but Percy is able to block all the bullets fired like an absolute chad. At the end of the episode, Sir Topham Hatt and Thomas are led into a trap where they are captured by Diesel Ten and Fitkins, who had recently been released from prison due to a cancer diagnosis. But they are not the main villains of the story. It was actually Phil Boggeston who planned all this, who then goes on to explain that his brother performed the autopsy, so was able to bend the details to make it seem like Boggeston had died and to cut with his monologue. We also see within his monologue that Bert delivers a train to Napford Station, which is rigged to explode at any moment. Due to a Deus Ex Machina save by Spencer and the Duke of Boxford, Thomas and Sir Topham Hatt are able to get out of the trap and quickly in try to escape to Napford. Wrath on the Rails starts right where we left off, with Spencer and Thomas speeding towards Napford Station, only to get there too late. The bomb goes off destroying the whole station, but luckily the station had evacuated beforehand so no one died as a result. In front of the station, Sir Topham Hatt gives an impassioned speech to the engines that they will stop Boggeston for good. Unfortunately, Gordon, Douglas and Toby are kidnapped by Boggeston, the Russian Mafia and Fitkins respectively. Boggeston makes a call to Sir Topham Hatt threatening to kill the engines he has hostage unless Sir Topham Hatt shows up with a huge amount of money, which Topham only agrees to only to buy time for the rescue attempt. In a free pronged attack, we see Toby get rescued and Fitkins is killed by Diesel. We see the attack on the random flour mill into cut with this, where Douglas is being held captive, but the only way like there is via the railway bridge, which had been rebuilt following the events of Season 2. While Douglas is being rescued, some of the Mafia members attempt to escape via the bridge, but Henry stops them, causing them to fall off the edge and explode in a ball of fire. Back at Boggeston's headquarters, we see Topham and his father come with the check. Outside the main building, Topham has a chat with Diesel 10, trying to convince him to join the good guys, but Diesel 10 review refuses. Inside the building, Boggeston sets, sets on fire with Topham and his father, Gordon, Ari, and Bird inside, with Rich the fuel tanker being filled to the brim with explosions, intending to go out with a bang. With quick thinking from Gordon, Gordon is able to escape the fire with the help of Ari and Bert, similar to what he did in the episode A Better View for Gordon by smashing out the back wall. The Toppins are able to help with the assistance of Bertie. Boggeston tries to run away with Diesel 10, but Diesel 10 decides to end this once and for all, accelerating forward and crashing into Rich, setting off the explosion killing himself, Rich, and Phil Boggeston, going out like a hero. Napford Station took a few years to be rebuilt, gaining a new canopy station. The, st the story ends beautifully with Thomas departing Napford Station, closing out the series with the end. Conclusion Wow, that timeline is kind of complex, with characters remembering things that happened in other timelines, as well as characters gaining their development well in advance of their own timelines. This was also kind of a nice retrospective, seeing how, how T1E2H3 expanded his content range since 2013, giving us some really great stories. If by some very small chance you are watching this, thank you. Thanks to those who have watched so far, I greatly appreciate it. This is my first kind of bigger video for this channel and hopefully it will help it continue to grow. I do have some things on the horizon, but if you guys have any other ideas for plans like, I don't know, maybe a Victor Tanzig timeline, I don't know, may as well, just post them in the comments. So please, subscribe, comment, share, like, you know, do the things that YouTubers always ask you to do. I'll pull up a thing but I don't have the statistics to show any of you are not subscribed. So this is TW Mallard 38 signing off for now, have a good one.